The trial of Otis McCain underway for a third day. Eric Hernandez will bring us the latest this noon. And local leaders are addressing coronavirus concerns today after our community saw a rise in cases. This noon, Tiffany Huertas explains what information officials will soon provide as well as their concerns. Live from Case at 12, the news at noon starts right now. Day three of the trial of Otis McCain began without the jury present as the defense filed a motion to suppress a portion of testimony by a via bus driver who said he saw the shooting. Erica Hernandez joins us live to explain what this all means. Erica, good afternoon. Can you tell us what motion to suppress is? Yeah, so the defense wanted testimony from Juan and Cecil not to be admissible in court about him identifying Otis McCain from a photo lineup. Now, the question was him about him making a mistake on that photo lineup and then correcting it. Judge Ron Ron Hill eventually overruled this motion and the jury was brought in to hear this testimony. During that testimony, and CISO cleared up the mistake he made and identified Otis McCain as the man who shot Detective Benjamin Marconi. And if you would, would you please identify for the jury uh, what the individual is wearing and where he's seated? If you please point to him and identify. He's to my left. Uh, he's wearing a white shirt with tie, black pants, and black shoes. Now, during cross-examination, the defense questioned how Enciso was able to identify McCain from the moving bus he was driving, as well as the confusion behind the mistake Enciso made on the photo lineup paperwork. In one of the hearings, uh, you said him instead of her. Uh, and and I'm, I'm trying to figure out, were you talking to the other detectives or to Officer Barnes? Uh, I just said... Well, I was talking to both of them, but I mean... Okay. Now, testimony is still ongoing right now. We also are hearing from other witnesses of the shooting, including from a man who actually followed the suspect vehicle after the shooting took place. We'll have more on that later this afternoon. David Alicia. Erica, you mentioned the jury a second ago. We know that there was a situation with a jury yesterday. How did that get resolved for today's trial to continue? Yeah, so yesterday a jury member did get sick and walked out of the courtroom twice. That jury member is here today, and there was no alternate needed to replace that person. All right. Thank you very much, Erica. We'll see you on the live stream later on this afternoon. Of course, a complete wrap-up this afternoon on KSO 12 News at 5 and 6. And the coronavirus continues to spread, and now local leaders are preparing to discuss the latest increase in cases. Medical experts will hold a presentation this afternoon at City Hall about the latest COVID findings. Tiffany Huertas joins us live from City Hall with more details. Tiffany? David, today city leaders will provide information on testing locations, upcoming vaccination clinics, and they're going to be sending a message to residents about getting vaccinated. Now, as of Monday, the region's positivity rate stood at 11.2 percent, nearly double from the week before. It's unclear if these cases are from people who have not been vaccinated or those who have. The city says testing is down overall. The city's dashboard says the city's risk level has been flagged as worsening. 155 people are in the hospital, 54 in the ICU. With the Delta variant of the virus showing up in Bear County, city officials are concerned of that too. Today at City Hall, the mayor, judge, other local leaders, plus local doctors will release more information on this topic. And another concern on everyone's mind is back to school safety. Doctors will be discussing this today. As also, you can watch the press conference live on KSAT.com. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Tiffany. Now to the latest on the pandemic across the country. Other areas are also seeing case rises as Delta variant gains traction in the U.S. As ABC's Rena Roy explains, health officials are particularly concerned over areas with low vaccination rates, which are seeing higher number of COVID-19 cases. Growing concerns over yet another possible surge of COVID-19. All of our ICUs and our 
Medical beds, surgical beds are completely full. In Arkansas, hospitalizations up nearly 64 percent in just two weeks. Dr. Steppi Mete says these patients are sicker than he's seen before, younger and mostly unvaccinated. It's frustrating and there's a little bit of disbelief that are we really going through this again. Just one of 47 states plus the District of Columbia battling an increase in cases since last week. Chicago once again cracking down on unvaccinated visitors. This time from hard hit Missouri and Arkansas, requiring negative tests or quarantine upon arrival. Vaccine hesitancy is still a major hurdle. Cheryl Tucker, who's unvaccinated, still on the fence, even after just spending a week in the hospital battling her second bout of COVID. Will you get vaccinated now? I'm not going to say 100 percent, but I'm thinking about it. Tennessee's vaccine chief says she was punished for trying to combat that way of thinking, telling ABC she believes she was fired for working to educate the public about the COVID-19 shot. Politics have been put ahead of the welfare of the people of Tennessee and the children of Tennessee. And those people are going to suffer. And this idea that people don't need to be vaccinated against the most significant infectious disease threat that we have faced in over 100 years, I think is a travesty. The Tennessee State Department of Health tells ABC News they can't comment on personnel issues, saying to a local paper that all vaccine outreach to minors is ending. In that state, less than 45 percent of those eligible are fully vaccinated. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. The death toll from February's winter storm rose to 210. That is according to the Texas Department of State Health Services. The storms wreaked havoc across the state, causing widespread power outages. From February 11th to March 5th, most people died from hypothermia. Other causes of death include car accidents, carbon monoxide poisoning, exacerbation of chronic illness, falls, and fire. Health officials say the numbers could change as they gather more information. And a group of Texas Democrats remain in Washington after they took off in an effort to block an elections bill from passing. During a press conference this morning, Democrats once again maintain that they are working to fight voter suppression. The lawmakers say that the bill in question promotes voter suppression. They say they're pushing federal lawmakers to pass the John Lewis for the People Act. Democrats fled to Washington on Monday and yesterday. The Texas House voted to send law enforcement to track down those who left Texas. Meanwhile, the Texas Senate passed the controversial elections bill and bail leg legislation. If the Democrats don't return before the special session ends, the Senate bills will languish. The search for justice continues this noon after two women were shot and killed back in May. And now police are hoping someone with information will reach out to them. Officers tell us the two victims, Arvonique Johnson and Oniqua Sims, were at the fourth quarter sports bar on Wurzbach Road on May 29th. They ended up in a car with two friends around 2.30 in the morning, and that's when officers say suspects driving in another vehicle chased them into a north side neighborhood. According to police, several people in the suspect vehicle fired bullets, killing Johnson and Sims. If you know something that can help police track down the suspects responsible, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. And this noon, police also looking for a driver involved in a hit and run early this morning. Officers tell us a man was crossing Foster Road near I-10 on the east side. He was not using a crosswalk, and that's when a driver in a black SUV hit him, but did not stop to help the victim. That means he was, that man was taken to the hospital, and he should be okay. And San Antonio police are out to solve an overnight shooting, but they may be on their own. They say the victim of the shooting was not being cooperative. It happened outside a home on the northeast side in the 4200 block of Chestnut Hill Drive. And as Katrina Weber tells us, police say the man was in the driveway when trouble rolled up in an SUV. Evidence in the middle of a northeast side street points to a crime that happened in the driveway of a home. A man standing there in the 4200 block of Chestnut Hill was hit by bullets fired from an SUV. He told San Antonio police he was helping a friend clean a food trailer when he was shot shortly after midnight. He was hit in the face, taken to a hospital with what police described as a non-life-threatening wound. The shooter, it seems, aimed wildly also hitting several parked cars in the process. Out here in the daylight, you can still see signs of the property damage that was done. There's broken glass in the street, and I counted at least seven bullet holes in this car. Some slammed into the back and side, while others shattered the windows. 
Police say the shooter took off in the SUV along with two other people. Early on, they said the shooting appeared to be random. A later report says the victim was uncooperative. Right now, police are still trying to sort it all out to figure out who shot the man and why. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Another chance for some pop-up downpours today. Temperatures stay below average. We'll take a look at the seven-day forecast coming up. And so to come this half hour as well, Team USA finally gets their first warm-up game win. Larry Mears has the highlights coming up in sports. And summer gives students a break from school, but that doesn't mean they should stop learning. Tips to help your little learner avoid the dreaded summer slide after the break. Soak up the sun the last few weeks of summer because before you know it, oh, it's back to school. As part of National Summer Learning Week, Idea Public Schools wants to help your students be prepared for the new academic year. There are going to be a lot of changes. So this week, it's all about highlighting the importance of kids learning and avoiding the summer slide. Summer should be fun and so should learning, which is why educators suggest taking part in fun activities like a scavenger hunt, setting up a tour at your local emergency stations, visiting the library, maybe doing an art activity, but most importantly, reading. Reading a story with your child can be fun and actually spark interest for them to continue reading on their own. One of the things that parents can do is to simply have them read either reading a book, reading from a tablet or from an iPhone. Um, also, going to the library. That's one of the easiest and least expensive ways of getting our children to read. And then also just having them act it out. They can also have discussions after they read their books so that they can make it fun and engaging. Principal Walker also suggests that students grades sixth and up read at least 45 minutes a day, while younger children in pre-K through fifth grade should read at least 30 minutes a day. So my question is, does reading the cereal box at breakfast count? How did I know that you were gonna ask something <laughs> similar? You know, it actually would count because you can read in increments. So however, go. if it takes you 30 minutes, we're, we're in a pickle. Hopefully <laughs> that's not the case. David knows all the ingredients in his <laughs> breakfast cereal. He's been studying them every morning. Uh, the aquifer is up uh, over half a foot, 671.2. Numbers are good here. We continue to rise with the aquifer. And in your pollen count, molds jumped up today. They're in the moderate category, 960. Pigweed is low. Still a little bit of uh, Saharan dust out there today. We may see a little bit more later in the week. We'll take a look at that coming up. Have we hit the dog days of summer yet? I feel like we did hit them at the beginning of the summer. And then we had all that rain, and now it's like, uh, see, it's already 84 degrees, so we must be in the dog days of summer. We're getting there. Okay. Uh, it, it feels pretty good. It, we've, ha we've had a good month so far. And I, and I should point out, we are five months removed from our oh, big yeah. uh, ice snowstorm, the big freeze. What was, the, what was the lowest temperature we reached again? Nine degrees. Nine, and what Nine was the wind, degrees. lowest wind chill was what? Negative eight. Woo! Numbers were huge. I mistakenly said it was a six month anniversary. Ah. It's the five month anniversary of that. But right. it just goes to show you it hasn't been that long. And, and thankfully temperatures are behaving themselves as we get into summer here. Let's look at the uh, month of review, July. Uh, basically every day this month we've been below average when we're talking about the high temperature here there's one day one day july 3rd we were above average and we got up to 95 but our average high temperature so far in the month of july is 88.5 we can deal with that and we've got rain along the way too which has been very nice one thing that's not so nice the Saharan dust still dealing with it there's a little bit out there today but uh, it does improve i think this afternoon we had a little bit of fog this morning, but it was so it was, it was hazy all the way around. But I think we lose some of that dust. And then by Friday into Saturday, we see another plume that tries to work into the area. And that'll probably stick around uh, through the weekend. Uh, right now, this model is showing it at least through Saturday there at uh, 5 p.m. All right, let's uh, switch gears and talk about the radar now. We've got some showers and a couple storms out there. And right now, mostly in Gonzales County, you can see some of the lightning strikes. This is going to be a little electrical as it works towards Gonzales. We'll see if these hold together. Certainly, we're not seeing the coverage that we saw yesterday where it was fairly widespread. We had activity coming into San Antonio. Not the case today, but I think we'll continue to see some of these pop-up showers and storms. And uh, Smiley, you just got a good downpour there as it crossed over 
uh, Highway 87 there and then working up towards again Gonzales and then Seguin. You're right on the edge there, but I think you could get some activity here within the next couple of minutes moving into your neck of the woods. We've also had a couple of uh, showers pop up there around Pleasanton and Jordanton, and this will work up into Bear County potentially if again if they hold together and it, it'll be uh, a hit or miss type situation today. Uh, there's a satellite picture. Quite a bit of cloud covered again. We started off with the low clouds and fog this morning. That's all lifted and we're going to see partly cloudy skies going into the afternoon. Right now 82 at the airport. South Southeast Julia winds at about five and there's a little closer look at the satellite picture and you can see clouds have scattered out for the most part. Temperatures on their way up 85 Stinson 82 Randolph 85 in New Braunfels 84 Hondo and we're at 86 right now in Carrizo Springs. We are forecasting temperatures to get up close to 90 again today. It's pretty much status quo here. You look at the forecast and it does show isolated showers popping up uh, through the day today, although the best chance is probably going to be east of I-35 this afternoon and probably a similar situation as we go into tomorrow with uh, some of that moisture still around. So the forecast for the rest of today, We'll take it up to 90 degrees, 30 percent chance of rain. The rain chances quickly fall off this evening with the loss of daytime heating. Long term forecast here. We still have uh, high pressures on uh, the east and uh, sorry, west and east coast. We're in the middle, but high pressure does not build over us uh, really in the coming days. So we're going to keep some slight rain chances in there. And by Tuesday, high pressure moves further west, further north and west, and that opens the door for maybe a weak frontal boundary, which would kick up rain chances next week. Something to look forward to. We'll see if it actually moves this far south. 30% chance of rain today, 91 tomorrow, 20% chance. And in fact, we're just going to keep a 20% chance all the way through Monday. It'll be isolated afternoon stuff and then a little better rain chance Tuesday. Thanks to that uh, pattern change, guys. Thank you, Justin. So uh, people were freaking out. The USA <laughs> lost two games in a row in this exhibition. I just was preparing for the Olympics, and now they blow somebody out. Yeah, they beat Argentina last night by a lot of points, and it's exactly what Team USA needed, a 28-point victory after losing games to Nigeria and Australia. They certainly slammed the door on Argentina last night. And in the NBA Finals tonight, the Suns really need Devin Booker to step up and score. Coming up. Tonight I thought we maintained that pretty much throughout the game. Uh, so hopefully that's a sign that we are getting a little better condition. And we also have to get rhythm. You know, some of the players, you know, they haven't played in a while. Coach Pop says Team USA is getting in a better game shape in big board sports. After back-to-back -back exhibition losses, Coach Pop and his guys got back in the win column last night against Argentina. First quarter, Kevin Durant knocks down a three-pointer, and it's 10-4 to USA. And how about Damian Lillard now for three of his 13 points? And check this out. USA with some great ball movement on this possession, capped off by a Bradley Beal triple. USA outshot Argentina from three-point land 13-9. to Second quarter, the U.S. leads by 14 when Durant sinks a jumper. He scored 17 points, tying Bradley Beal for team high honors. Third quarter now, Zach Levine explodes to the rim for a slam dunk and foul. That was nasty. He scored 15, and Team USA wins 108-80. All five USA starters scored at double digits as Team USA is figuring out how to handle international competition. Our biggest thing is we have to realize it's not the NBA, and Coach Pop keep reemphasizing that every single day. Um, it's way more physical. Um, guys are smarter. These guys have been playing together for five, ten plus years, so they have this experience and the chemistry, and we're trying to develop that in a short period of time. So, uh, you know, sense of urgency is kind of you know what we're kind of preaching, but at the same time, every single day we have to get better, and that's how we're taking it. You know, we're taking it a day at a time. Today we got better. Uh, still a lot more we can improve on, but. We're moving in the right direction. You know, they haven't played in a while, uh, let alone practicing together. They haven't shot the ball. They haven't been doing a whole lot. So uh, these moments uh, to play these games are huge for us. So it was, it was better, bit by bit every day, I hope. Team USA will not practice today after earning a much-needed victory.
NBA Finals were resumed tonight between the Suns and the Bucks. Milwaukee won Game 3 120 to 100 and trailed the Suns two games to one. In that game, Suns guard Devin Booker was held to 10 points after scoring 27 and 31 in Games 1 and 2. And Booker says he's confident he'll bounce back tonight. Short memory. Just move on. Um, been there before. You know what I'm saying? Um, so just understanding that, understanding the game, understanding um, situations that, that I've been through and just trusting the work that, that you've put in. Um, as simple as that. But, you know, my main objective out there is to, to win the basketball game. And, and then Booker, you know, I think, uh, you know, lots of different guys guard him. He's a great challenge, keeping him off the free throw line, keeping him off the three-point line. Um, I'm sure he'll be ready to go. We, we got to be ready to match, um, you know, that going into the next game. And that next game is tonight at 8 in Milwaukee, live right here on KSAT 12. Mike sounds a lot like Pop when he answers some of these questions. He certainly he does. Tell he's does been it? around for a while yeah. in the Spurs organization. All right, Larry, thank you very much. And LeBron James is hoping for a slam dunk as the four-time NBA champ teams up with Bugs Bunny in a new movie, a look at the Space Jam sequel, coming up in the next half hour. And it's summer, and what a better way to, what a better time to enjoy the great outdoors, whether you're hosting, grilling, just watching the kids play, having a good old time, setting up. What you set up can make all the difference. And sprucing up can be as easy as setting a new outdoor rug. That's all you need is just a rug. Well, your size, Marilyn Morris explains which rugs hold up the best today at five after entertainment tonight. Who knew? It's a rug. Welcome back. A group of Senate Democrats say they have reached agreement on a $3.5 trillion budget that will fund President Biden's so-called human infrastructure plan. The bipartisan package to upgrade things like roads and bridges is still on track to be unveiled this Friday. As ABC's Faith Ubuwe reports, President Biden is expected to head to Capitol Hill today to discuss a dual track approach with Senate Democrats at their weekly lunch. Democrats on the Senate Budget Committee announcing late Tuesday they've reached an agreement on a massive $3.5 trillion plan to, among other things, address climate change, expand Medicare, and help struggling families for the next decade. Every major program that President Biden has asked for is funded in a robust way. The Democrats acknowledging there's still a long road ahead. The plan is to pass the multi-trillion dollar spending agreement in the Senate using a budgetary tool called reconciliation that requires only 50 votes. It is transformational, and frankly, it is exciting. But it's unclear whether the plan has the full backing of moderate and progressive Democrats. The $3.5 trillion agreement is far less than the $6 trillion proposal Senator Bernie Sanders had put on the table. There are 50 Democrats in the caucus. Now, I suspect there are 50 different points of view. The Democrats say the spending agreement is fully paid for, though no details have been made available. President Biden pushing for taxing wealthy Americans, making more than $400,000 a year and corporations to fund his spending priorities. Senate GOP leader Mitch McConnell promising a showdown. Liberal policies are overspending, overborrowing and hurting our economy. The reconciliation plan would accompany the much leaner bipartisan bill, which includes traditional infrastructure like roads and bridges. Democrats are trying to pass both through Congress as twin bills, a delicate balance that could risk losing vital GOP support. That bipartisan bill could be introduced this Friday. I mean, no illusions how challenging this is going to be. And President Biden will meet with Senate Democrats this afternoon to discuss the next steps forward. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. Mask mandates on planes will stay in place for now. The U.S. Supreme Court decided it won't take up a long shot bid to overturn the public travel mask mandate. A man in Florida had challenged the Biden administration's order. Lucas Wall says his anxiety disorder prevents him from wearing a mask, so he hadn't been able to fly. Justice Clarence Thomas oversees potential cases out of appeals courts in Florida, and he denied the request for the high court to take up the case. And a federal appeals court says the minimum age for legally buying a handgun should not be 21 years old. A three-judge panel of the 4th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals says placing a minimum age of 21 years old to buy weapons from licensed dealers violates the Second Amendment. The majority opinion was written by Judge Julius Richardson. It says 18 to 20-year-olds have Second Amendment rights. Richardson's stance was backed by another judge, 
Both of them were appointed by Republican presidents. A third judge, James Wynn Jr., dissented. He says this ruling gives the gun lobby a win in a battle it lost on Capitol Hill decades ago. Wynn was appointed by a Democratic president. Let's get outside with live cam. Do the clouds look a whole lot different than they did, let's say, I don't know, five months ago when we were freezing? <laughs> yes. Uh, right? Big difference. Big difference. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's been an interesting year weather wise. We've gotten pretty much all of it. Uh, we, we've mainly had somewhat of a, a below average summer when it comes to temperatures, which has been great. We're going to deal with that again today. Temperatures slightly around 90 uh, this afternoon. Let's look at the radar, too, because we've got some cooling showers and a couple of thunderstorms out there. You see those. Uh, off to the east of San Antonio, a couple lightning strikes mixed in here or there, but uh, this is mostly uh, just moderate to light rain and these uh, downpours are moving pretty quickly. We're not seeing much of that here around San Antonio, but nice little area here in Gonzales County. This may eventually work its way up towards Gonzales here within the hour, and then we're also seeing some uh, downpour starting to work through the city of Seguin. So if you're watching us from Seguin, getting a good downpour right now, not seeing much in the way of lightning strikes, so probably not very loud, but uh, you're going to have to use those windshield wipers for at least a little bit as this activity works through. Uh, looking back towards San Antonio, not much there. Uh, we may see a couple of pop-up showers uh, this afternoon. And uh, temperature-wise, we're at 82 at the airport, 82 Randolph, 86 Castroville, closing in on 90 in Pleasanton with uh, partly cloudy skies. We expect temperatures to be up close to 90. We'll call for a 20 to 30 percent chance of rain. Uh, rain chances will taper off this evening once we lose that daytime heating guys. Thank you, Justin. And 10 days after having surgery, Pope Francis was finally able to leave the hospital. He was discharged this morning. Pope Francis was in the hospital to have surgery for colon diver diverticulitis. A Vatican spokesperson said the pontiff before returning to the Vatican went to the Basilica of St. Mary Major to express his gratitude for the success of his surgery and to pray for others. Last Sunday, the 84-year-old conducted his weekly prayer from a hospital balcony, marking his first appearance in public since the surgery a week earlier. Still to come, this year marks the 25th anniversary of the movie Space Jam, and the sequel arrives this week with LeBron James hitting the animated court. So how his co-stars are describing working with the NBA champ still coming up. And Southside football getting some recognition from Dave Campbell and his big time magazine. Larry Ramirez with the details coming up in sports. This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar News. Tesla founder Elon Musk appearing in court again yesterday. That to defend the company's 2016 acquisition of Solar City. Now, Musk telling the court that the acquisition was in order to make Tesla more than just a car company, but also, quote, part of a sustainable energy future. Tesla purchased the company back in 2016 for $2.6 billion. Meanwhile, Norwegian Cruise Line filing a lawsuit against the state of Florida, this over their vaccine passport ban. The cruise line says in the court filing that the state's ban hurts their ability to prevent the spread of COVID-19 on board their ships. Now, should the ban remain in place, Norwegian may be forced to cancel upcoming cruises, which they say would be devastating and unrecoverable losses as a result. Norwegian's first sailing from Florida set for August the 15th. And Panda Express is adding Beyond Meat orange chicken to their menus in select locations. Exclusive restaurants in New York and Southern California will offer the vegan option while supplies last starting on July the 26th. The dish is going to be called Beyond the Original Orange Chicken, and it's going to pair Beyond plant-based chicken with Panda Express's signature orange sauce. And the Chichetto News Business to Tech Update. I'm Baker Pichetto coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. Nostalgic millennials rejoice. Sorry, David. The long-awaited sequel to Space Jam bounces into theaters Ooh. this week, finally. As CNN's Rick Damagella reports, this time around, LeBron James hits the court in the lead role. What is this? Ah! I'm a cartoon? Meep. 
What's up, Doc? LeBron James tips off with some new teammates in Space Jam, A New Legacy. I need to assemble an elite team to help give my son back. I know what you're looking for. I love Space Jam, the original. I grew up on that film. I love it so much. So it meant a lot for it to be coming back, but it meant a lot for it to be coming back in this way because I, I think that this film was modernized to near perfection. The only way you're getting your son back is if you and I play a little basketball. You want to play me in basketball? Don Cheadle portrays the movie's villain and says he tried to put his animated co-stars at ease. I think they were very impressed from what I could tell. They were, they were really intimidated to be around me. I tried to calm them down, put them at ease. You know, I was like, guys, you're fine. You're fine. You were here before me. You'll probably be here after me. You just relax. We're all here to do the same thing. Ah! Hey, mother. <laughs> no, you got to play deep first. LeBron was always my favorite player growing up, so getting to film with him was a dream come true. And, you know, getting to know him personally and, you know, knowing how cool he is, um, man, he, he made it really easy for me and everyone else who was with to film. It's game time. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. So now that's the big debate. Well, no. Space okay. Jam 1 or Space Jam 2? Well, apparently I'm the only one excited about Space Jam 2 in this studio. No, no, no. I'm, I'm excited, excited, excited about it. I, 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 but it's missing Bill Murray. See, See there Bill you go. Bill Murray was in the original. They, they Are sequels Even ever as good Bill as the original? Murray, you wouldn't be happy about it, David Seary. <laughs> right, well, <laughs> this is a debate for another day. Are sequels <laughs> as good as the original? Usually not, but this one looks pretty good. <laughs> Uh, 82, the high so far today, 72, the low this morning. The records are 105 and 68. 105, we set just last year, so it shows you that uh, this year's been very different. We'll take a look at the radar, some storms affecting the Seguin area. We'll have an update coming up. We should wait for that old commercial break. Still debating Space Jam or Space Jam 2. And then you stay silent. <laughs> well... Well, Justin, this weekend, <laughs> what day is it? Is it Wednesday? It is Wednesday. Wednesday. All right, so look, I haven't even let go of the umbrella. I still have it mm -hmm. tucked in my car because the clouds are deceiving. I don't it's know if smart. it's going to rain or... It, it, the chances are you're, you're not going to get any rain today, but uh, there are some downpours out there. Well, if you will, and so it's always smart to have the umbrella with you just in case. You, you might need it for the sun. Outside. It might get really hot. You want an umbrella to protect yourself from the sun. I like being tan. <laughs> but thank you, David. Thank you. Well, it, it, there's not a lot of sun out there yeah. at the moment. Some cloud cover. Okay. Uh, but yes, <laughs> whatever you need the umbrella for. I tried. Let's take a look at the, uh, the radar real quick, and we'll show you where the activity is at this hour. Uh, I mentioned that we've got some activity moving into Seguin. Some lightning strikes now showing up there, so it's uh, likely a little loud as that activity passes through. We're noticing some showers and storms in Gonzales County, some new development just north of Yorktown. That will all move off to the north. Uh, this area of rain, though, in Seguin, pretty heavy. It's now through town, so it's just crossing I-10. And the heaviest part of that uh, storm came right through downtown Seguin, dumped some pretty heavy rain there. The good news is these are moving quickly, so we're not going to see a lot of street flooding here. Uh, and these are not severe, but uh, some brief heavy rain for sure. And as you go south around Pleasanton, we're starting to see some development now, so you're getting a good downpour there. This will work its way north up uh, 281 there towards uh, San Antonio. So we'll keep an eye on that activity as well. And uh, there's some chances for some isolated stuff today, as I mentioned here in town, but it's not going to be widespread heavy rain by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, looking at the big picture here, uh, we noticed the cloud cover the, across parts of Texas. As you go out to West Texas, it's full sun. But there is a little bit of a sea breeze action going on today. We see that line coming right off the coast. We see this a lot of times during the summer. It can help to enhance some of that rainfall as it moves inland. And that's why we have some of those chances there, not only today, but going forward, just some slight chances for uh, afternoon showers and storms. 82 right now, south southeast Julia winds around five miles per hour. The clouds are trying to thin out even a little bit more. Uh, so, yes, we will see partly cloudy skies later today. 85 in New Braunfels, 81 Bernie Stage, 87 in Divine, 82 Tarpley, 78 right now in Las Maples, 87 Catula. And uh, the heat index, it's in the upper 80s here in San Antonio. I mean, look, this could be, these numbers could be a lot worse. Uh, but we are starting to see some mid 90s in places like Pleasanton. Hopefully, that shower that's near you will cool you down some. 94 is what it feels like in Catula, thanks to that thick humid humidity. Here's what the forecast looks like from our computer models vantage point. And by 3 p.m. today, it does still show some isolated activity out there. 
and then by five o'clock still probably seeing some pop-ups after that though once we lose the daytime heating these things tend to fall apart and go away and the forecast for the rest of today calls for a high right around 90 30 percent chance of rain rain chances fall off as we go into tonight okay let's look long term now we haven't had that ridge pipe pressure over us which has been great it's been sitting over the, the desert southwest, which hasn't been great for those folks, or the east coast. But uh, at no time does this ridge come back over top of us. In fact, it tries to shift a little bit further to the north and west. And when that happens, it actually opens the door, potentially, for a weak frontal boundary to make it down here. Now, fronts in July never really cool us down, but they can kick up some showers and storms. A lot of times they'll stall just to our north. But if they can get close enough, it could kick up some rain, and that would be encouraging uh, Tuesday into Wednesday of next week. We'll keep you posted. That would uh, kick up rain chances a little more, but at the moment, just a 20% chance of rain here through the weekend, a little higher chance on Tuesday. And notice temperatures stay right there in the low 90s. We'll be right back. I'm just, we're all still, and me personally, just in awe of his ability to do that. I mean, he came in, hyped up on this stage, gets warmed up, and then, I mean, to go take the at-bat, he was sitting in his chair, like, get, catching his breath. Uh, but the way he has handled everything. How he's pulling this off. American League All-Star skipper Kevin Cash is talking about Shohei Otani, who made history by achieving a first in an All-Star game. He was selected as both the position player and pitcher, and he picked up the win last night in big board sports. American League facing the National League in the MLB All-Star game last night from Rocky Stadium in Colorado. Max Scherzer pitching when Vladimir Guerrero Jr. lines one right back up the middle, almost hitting Scherzer. He is out at first base. Look again at the 111 mile per hour ball off the bat of Vlad. Scherzer told Chelsea Jane to the Washington Post, I'm alive. That's the success story. I'm just grateful I still have a blue eye and a brown eye. Max and Vlad would hug it out. Third inning, Vlad crushes one deep and high to left field and gone, landing 460. 68 feet as long as Homer this season. At 22 years old, he's the second youngest player to Homer in an All-Star game. The youngest was Johnny Bench when he was 21 in 1969. Guerrero is also one of three father-son combos to Homer in the Midsummer Classic, joining the Bonds and Griffies. He was also named MVP. The AL takes it 5-2 for their eighth straight win, tying the second longest win streak in All-Star game history. You know, unfortunately, I'm a part of three of them, uh, so not uh, the thing I'm most proud of. Um, they came out swinging tonight, and um, I think it's like tw uh, we're like three and 17 or three and 20 maybe in the last 24. So uh, not ideal. Uh, like I said to uh, Bill earlier, I hope I get a chance to uh, win one next year. Second half of the season will start tomorrow with one game, the Red Sox at the Yankees. In the minors last night, double-A Central Ball, the Hooks beat the Missions 4-1. to one. The bats were cold for the Missions in their season opener against the Hooks. They were held to just three hits. The Southside Cardinals are the highest-ranked team in Class 5A Division I at number 22 per Dave Campbell's Texas football, in part because they have quarterback Richard Torres as one of their five players back on offense, six on defense off a team that went 9-2 overall and 5-1 and in district last season. Torres announcing just weeks ago he's committed to play for Nebraska. In Class 5A Division II, the highest-ranked team in the top 25 is Bernie Champion with 12 starters back off a team that went 7-3 and 4-1 and and in district play. We'll take a look at those full frame right now. Division I, you have Southside coming in at number 22 in the state. And Division II, you have Bernie Champion at number 15 and Alamo Heights sitting right there at number 24. All right, Larry, real quick, we've yes. been debating this for the last half hour. Uh -oh. Space Jam 1 or Space uh -oh. Jam 2? You're the sports guy, which one? Or well, I have to see Space Jam 2 before, but I'm just going to go with one because it's the original. Thank you. Boom. Thank you, Larry. <clears throat> Send that downtown to Mike and Fiona, huh? How about that? <laughs> I'm still thinking about talking to football already, so that's around the corner. Uh, well, it is a wild Wednesday, and we have Amanda Winter from Once in a Wild here with some of her, her animal friends, Who is including this? this one. 
Yeah, we're happy to be here today. <laughs> Who is this little guy? This is Sonny the Cockatiel. He decided to hop onto the table to eat his uh, little snack, I guess. Why not? He'll fit right in on this show. Right, right he loves in. his snacks. Maybe not the camera as much. <laughs> Wait till you see some of the exotic animals that she has brought with her. Yes, and we're going to tell you how they can come to you. Yes, indeed. All right, ready to uh, go to a place with lots of great food, a food park, and who else is out there but... David Elder is there to check out hey, hey. this new spot and how to grab a bike. That's right. You guys, we are out here at El Camino. We're going to go inside, show you all the delicious drinks that they have at the bar. Plus, there's a food truck out here that calls it home. Holy smoke food truck. We're going to go over there. And you know I got to try the food. That's why I'm here. But it's right near downtown. I mean, right off the river. This is where it's at. El Camino. Stay tuned right here on SA Live. We're going in. It's going to be big. All right, he's mm -hmm. got food, and we have got food too because our dear friend Shamie McNeil with Beef Love and Texans is here. And you got a fresh take on summer grilling. Oh, it's going to be so good. We are going to be using the tenderloin, which is the most tender cut of mm -hmm. beef you can get. And I'm going to show you how to make it every day too, if you want to do that with some substitutions, sirloin, and so many other ideas that we can do. That's okay. going on the grill, and we're going to put the watermelon on the grill, and we're going to show you some tips about why we do the same thing with a watermelon, where we cook it whole or a big slice like this, and then we carve it just like we do beef at the end of the grilling. So we're gonna learn all kinds of great tips. All right, all that and more when SA Live continues in just a few minutes.